May we pray. Gracious God, whose love and grace embraces all of humanity, we beseech your presence as we come to celebrate this night of honor. We pray that you would grant all of us your mercy, peace, and favor as we dedicate our lives to uplift our community. We especially pray for this Lee County Community Foundation and the work that they do. Please provide the needed resources that they might keep lifting up the poor, less fortunate, children, disabled, and others in desperate need of your tender care. Bless the honorees tonight who have made many sacrifices to uplift this Lee County community. And then bless all who came to share and remind us all that we best serve you by serving one another. Bless this food tonight, we pray. Allow it to be a nourishment to us. We thank you for it. In your son's name, amen. amen. All right, continue to eat. We'll be back here in a there's a lot of good fellowship going on, but are we ready to start? That was a question. Are you ready to start? Okay. First of all, I want to thank y'all for coming. Some of you are here on behalf of the foundation. Some of you are here on behalf of the man of the year. Some of you are here on behalf of the lady of the year, the woman of the year. But guess what? You are here and you put your time and effort and money towards this event. And you know what, from the foundation and from the honorees, we want to thank you for your participation in being here tonight. Um, some people have traveled hard today, had a big day, and it took a lot to get here. But we really appreciate the effort that you put forward being here and supporting this event and these people we want to honor tonight. Um, you know, this is the eighth year that the foundation has, has recognized a man and a woman of the year. Now, if you look around this room, even, or in your mind, think about who could candidates be. It's a hard choice, and there are many. And um, so, looks like we got a, this thing could go on for a long time if we just pick two a year. So uh, we look forward to many more to come. But let me just tell you about uh, the eight who we've had in the past. 2012 was our first one, and we had Grace and Larry Aiken. 2013, Isabel Lawrence and David Spivey. 2014, Helen Hinks and Ted Lanier. 2015, Virginia Hester and Dr. Dean Kessler. 2016, Carol Carlson and Tony Lett. 2017, this year, uh, last year I made a mistake and I said Dr. Ann and Robert McConnell, but it's really, it's Ann and Dr. Robert McConnell. <laughs> Some of you laughing probably know why I said that. Yeah. And, um, Last year, 2018, Margaret Ferguson and Jimmy Love. So, uh, Margaret and Jimmy are here. Margaret's over here. Where is Margaret? All right, there's Margaret and Jimmy sitting right here. Let's give these pastor pistols a round of <laughs> What we did then and what we're doing now is recognizing what we know, I would say, is some achievements that, that we have seen. But as you well know, when you contribute to the community, not just the foundation's efforts, but when you give your, of yourself, 
um, to benefit somebody else. There's a lot you do that does not get recognized. And for it to for you to do enough to get recognized, there is a tremendous amount of work that does not get recognized. So um, these people be applauded and thank you for your contribution to our community. And this year, man, we have we have yet two great ones. Um, Linda Smith at this table and Jerry Pesley at this table right here. Um, and you're going to hear, and then, look, this is not really a serious thing. It's going to, hopefully we have some tears and some laughter. So uh, just, just relax. And um, I want to thank the board, the Lee County Community Foundation board. This thing is like, I compared to putting on a wedding. And because um, when you have to send out reservation, uh, if the invites get the RSVPs back, get the table assignments, and then get everything together, uh, it, it is an undertaking. It really is. And I really thank the um, the board and um, Oscar Roberto can be here tonight. He's our secretary. Mark Akinno shows back at 17. We you raise your hand, Mark. There you go. Oliver Crawley is sitting over here. There's Oliver. Jan Hayes. There we go. Uh, Wilson Cox is not here. Linda, she, you know, there you go, Linda. Uh, David Spivey couldn't be here, and Yvonne Bullard, one of our newest board members. Yes. Thank you for all that you do for the foundation. Thank you for helping me so much in all this. It's been, a, it's been an undertaking, but it's, it's very worthwhile. I really enjoyed it. Um, what did you think of that meal tonight? Carolina Turkey. <laughs> brought it out to us, the quick turnaround. We thank them so much. And they didn't just do this for us. They can do this for you. They have a great program out here. They have good food, they have good service, and the communication that they have has been outstanding. Um, uh, Dennis Durgan in the back, Jesse Reagan's in the back in the kitchen to help prepare, and uh, Victoria Harper is the event coordinator and the director. Uh, if you want to schedule a event out here, you contact Victoria Harper. Uh, She's a class act, get it together, very organized, you won't, you won't miss a beat. I'm so glad we have, and we ought to be proud that we have a facility like this in Lee County that we can come to, because we can really show, show it off out here. This is really nice, and we thank Carolina Trust. Um, I want to move on to our sponsors. <clears throat> You'll see in the middle of the table um, the centerpieces uh, from Floral Designs by Eddie. He donated those. Um, Eddie's a great guy, has a great business, and um, uh, those are the wonderful centerpieces, and those are uh, donated to us by, by Andy. The music tonight, do uh, you know who that was? Greg Gill? Oh, I'm going to say something about Greg. <laughs> uh, he's the heart of, ja uh, heart, of uh, jazz, heart of Carolina Jazz, is Greg Gill. He'll be at the Temple Theater June the 8th, so if you want to have a great concert, don't miss um, the Heart of Jazz, Heart of Jazz at Temple Theater, June 8th. I would like to move to uh, have somebody come up here that I'll, uh, oh, I need to do the sponsors. That's right. Sorry, it was not out front. I got to focus that part. Our sponsors are extremely important for us to uh, put on this event. And if you'll see the program, I'd ask that you turn to the program and I'm um, just kind of want to, I hate to say force you to look, but I want you to look at this. This is sometimes overlooked in events like this. It just blow on by them. But um, if you'll look at the Friends um, category and the Silver Sponsors and then the Gold Sponsors, uh, Duke Energy and Linda Smith, we thank you for that, that level of sponsorship. And then the corporate sponsor this year, we've got uh, it's a co-sponsorship from Vertex Solutions, which is Jerry Pedley's group, and um, and Walmart. Table 10 of Walmart. Where are you, Table 10? There you are, right back there. Thank you. You know, um, I think we all go to Walmart and contribute there, don't we? But it's nice to see that Walmart supports back the community uh, in such a way that would um, that they want to give back to the community. I will say this, that um, Caroline Trace also wanted to be a sponsor, and it wasn't just by 
cutting the meal because you never know what that would what that means. I thought we'd come out here they were gonna be a sponsor and they said, Yeah, we'll be a friend, but they're not doing that. They're actually gonna send us a check, which you know that you never know what the cutting the meal would be. So thank you, Kelly and Trace, for being uh, that level of sponsor as well. So uh lady I want to bring up now, Dawn Dan uh, Dawn Neighbors uh, is our regional director. And Dawn, I asked her how many children she had. She looked at me like I was crazy, but I meant the boards. She has seven of us. So she runs seven boards of the foundations across the across the area. She has a daunting task of keeping us all straight, but she has a few remarks she'd like to make, and I would ask Dawn to come up with. Hey, Michael, I really have three children. <laughs> I'd like to thank Michael and the board for Lee County Community Foundation, first of all. I do work with seven boards. I work with the Sand Hills region. Uh, Rockingham County always tells me they're not in the Sand Hills region, but they fall in my region. I have Harnett, Hoke, Lee, Montgomery, Moore, Randolph, and Rockingham counties where I have boards. I have the Moore County has a women's group also, the philanthropic group, Moore Women at Giving Circle. So I actually have eight organizations I work with. I have to tell you, this board is the smallest in number that I work with. There are nine active members right now on this board. I only have two boards that pull off an event like this. The other one is much larger. In Lee County, you have nine people that not only pull off an event that is as wonderful as this event and honor such wonderful people, but they are so dedicated into making sure we have very impactful community grants. This is their fundraiser. And then we're awarding grants from this. Nine people, so just thank you so much. Round of applause for you. I actually work for the North Carolina Community Foundation, which is the 501c3 nonprofit umbrella organization over the Lee County Community Foundation and over 50 other affiliates across the state. We are the only statewide community foundation, so we operate from the mountains to the coast in North Carolina. It's my privilege to work with this board and the others, as I mentioned. The Lee County Community Foundation was started in 1997, and their primary goal here is to encourage philanthropy and meaningful contributions in the Lee County community. We do this through encouraging the development of endowment funds, which last in perpetuity. These support Lee County causes and organizations and students through the board's community grant making. As I mentioned, this is their largest fundraiser of the year. We also do a letter writing campaign that many of you may have seen. We had a very attractive green envelope this year in November. We call it the Chairman's Challenge Campaign. That's the other fundraiser they do. All funds from tonight, all profits, will go into their community grant making fund. 50% of the profits will be awarded out this year to community organizations, and the other 50% stays in there to fill up a capacity for future grant making. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last year, the Lee County Community Foundation Board was able to award five grants totaling $14,950 to organizations in this community. These organizations addressed food insecurity needs, childhood homelessness, specific needs of local citizens with autism and vision issues, and recovery services for substance abuse users, all from Lee County. As I mentioned, 50% of the profits tonight will be awarded, so that will boost that giving amount this year when they award grants. We invite you all to attend our grant reception when we have that, and that will be announced in the paper. As you are sponsors of those grants, we would like you to see where your money is invested in your community. We also have 30 funds currently held with the North Carolina Community Foundation that support Lee County causes and organizations and people. Since inception, these funds have awarded a total of 504 grants and scholarships, totaling more than $1,251,000. That's local money from local people supporting local causes. So thank you all very much for being a part of that. If you are working with a Lee County nonprofit or a community-wide serving church, a rescue squad, or a fire department, we want to remind you that the Lee County Community Foundation grant cycle will be open on Friday, March 22nd. That will be on the North Carolina Community Foundation webpage or just look Lee County Community Foundation. We are open for one month. 
They can apply for grants, and if anyone has a problem, call me up. I'm happy to help you write that grant. So the Lee County Community Foundation, great local people serving local causes with local funds. Thank you so much for what you do, and thank you for being a part of this this evening. same time and we've had a relationship the whole time and uh, it's amazing how relationships grow into friendships and just these people are strong folks y'all know that you're here but I just want, I won't get a chance to say my piece but uh, I appreciate our relationship and I have drawn so much from you over the years you're a great example for it for a lot of folks to follow and you're being watched by uh, by people and um, and some we want to emulate some things you do in the community and how much you give. You're a great example for us to follow. And Jerry, you are too. I appreciate what you've done for this community. And uh, you and I had a lot of conversations. And the mic just went out. Check one. Okay. And uh, does it go out when I start lighting? Is that what happens? <laughs> 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 Juice for this one, baby. <laughs> Just tell the truth, though. So, same thing, Jerry. Your our relationship has gone back a ways, and I appreciate all the things we've done together and conversations we've had. You, too, reach out to and touch a lot of kids in this community, especially, and give back to the community. It's just remarkable to watch uh, the newspapers and the media just, you know, time and time again recognize you for that. And thank you both for what you've done for this community. I know you're going to have some round of applause, but. I'm going to call you to do one more. We give these two one more round of applause. So I didn't steal even one of the speakers' thunder. I, I just try to keep this very generic. So introducing the Woman of the Year honoree is a best friend, a confidant, a sister in the ministry, Miss Kathy S. Calvert. A friendship between these two began a few decades ago when they spent long nights writing and editing and printing a church newsletter, The Spotlight. This publication was done using a machine called a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> you see why they're not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll segue just a minute. We went on vacation with our family not too long ago, and we went in there, and this yellow thing sitting on the counter, it was, uh, it was lemon yellow, and it was, had this little dial on it. It was an old-timey phone with a cord, you know, and it was a, it was a rotary dial phone. <laughs> the kids picked it up and said, what is this? She said, that's a telephone. What we used to use. She said, well, how do you text on it? <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way. As Kathy and Linda perfected their, uh, the newsletter, working late in the evenings and sometimes into the early morning hours, they perfected their friendship that would be labeled envious by many. Miss Coward is the mother of two sons who are her greatest joy. Kathy's bio is also outstanding. She is a graduate of Shaw University with a degree in religion and philosophy. She holds a certificate of Bible counseling and continued her training at A&T State University. She is an associate minister at First Pentecostal Church in Ashburn, North Carolina. She has served in the capacity of Sunday school teacher, education department chairperson, the pastor's aid ministry, and the women's ministry. Some of these special, something special about Kathy um, are to follow. She served as a guardian at Lydon, a tutor at Community Connections, an associate chaplain at Randolph Hospital, and a community representative on Randolph Hospital's Strategic Planning Committee. She has been a viable instructor for the Randolph County Prison Reform and Reentry Program. Kathy enjoys pottery, Ministry Healing Laughter as M Miss Mary in a Gospel Comedy. 
I want to see that. <laughs> this ministry is taking her across the state of North Carolina as well as out of state. Please welcome Miss Kathy Cowley. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm full. <laughs> I cannot go to sleep, okay? <laughs> Not on me. I'm privileged to stand tonight to introduce my friend. It is an honor to be chosen by your peers as woman of the year, or anything, as a matter of fact. To have people say, I see your work, and I don't take it for granted, but I appreciate you. She has earned this honor by her diligent and untiring work. I need not mention her bio because you can read it for yourself. I was reading it and thinking, and she's still alive. <laughs> share the news. She was elated, but humbled that you had selected her. Well, I was so excited that I began to make suggestions. Because Kathy would have had a huge billboard over my house by the next morning announcing that I was woman of the year. But of course, she quickly shot me down. And she wouldn't have it. That's the way my friend is. Just pleased to serve, not requiring any praise or her name in lights. She doesn't have a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but she is a star, illuminating hope and life to those who are fortunate enough to cross her path. Linda, your light shines from the inside, and the light you bring no clouds can hide. You know, like Linda, I probably could have had a career in the science field. She's brilliant, you know. She was the chair of the science department at Eastern Randolph. I heard she was pretty tough, but I thought, I'm pretty smart. I can do this. So hey, I signed up for the advanced biology class. First day I showed up to class, I was so excited. She handed out our syllabus. I said, wow, great. She's given us our assignments for the whole year. Because it was about this thick. <laughs> she got up in front of the class and announced that it was our nine weeks assignment. <laughs> I would have to have a foot bag just for those assignments. Oh, but needless to say, I was in the office the next day. I had reconsidered. <laughs> but that was my loss. Please don't tell my sons I copped out, okay? I really wanted to know. And I hate to say this tonight. I'm just going to come clean. I don't know if any of you have experienced this yet, but Linda will tell you stuff that's just not true. <laughs> she has invited us, and we have attended more retirement that I can count. And every time she says, this is the last one. So Linda, the gang and I have decided that we're not re attending any more retirement parties, okay? Right, Andy? Raise your hand. <laughs> we have to leave. Honestly, retirement is not a lifestyle for her. Her gifts, talents, and passion for helping and improving the community and others' lives will not allow her to sit. For she realized that she was placed on this earth for purpose, and to whom much is given, much is required. We never had a falling out. Oh, but wait, she did knock me out one time. <laughs> With a bed railing. Remember that? Don't, don't hold your head down. Y'all don't believe me, but see right here? I still got a scar. I still got a scar. Seriously, though, we were moving, Linda from Randolph County to Stanford. And I guess I must have been in the way and she and Annie just knocked me right in the head. And I fell out, you know, I'm real dramatic. And I stayed out till they'd almost finished all the work. <laughs> it's not easy to do the human journey. There are times when you feel like you're stumbling around in the dark trying to find your way. But then a light call Linda will call drop by, or you'll open the mailbox, and there you'll find a card or a letter of encouragement. 
One of my greatest gifts has been to call you my friend, Linda. We've unwrapped this precious gift through lean times and times of plenty, through tears, laughter, dialogue, prayer, the word of God, and through serving together or just sitting by the side of the road having a an good old yard sale. <laughs> if I may borrow from Oprah, what I know for sure is that she has surrendered herself with hands reaching up and out for the greater good, as Jesus did. Answering the call that says, I have need of thee, and did not shun the weight of preparation to complete her life task. Linda has chosen to run and not be weary. Tired sometimes, maybe. She has chosen to walk and not to faint. She has artfully navigated through the storms of life and continues to soar against all odds with dignity and grace. My friend has provided mentoring relationships and created avenues for productive lives, helping them to march from defeat to victorious achievement, unveiling untapped potential and capabilities. She has embraced those who society says are unacceptable with sincere care and concern without being judgmental, demeaning, or degrading, but always uplifting, recognizing that but by the grace of God, there do I. She has given shelter to the homeless, fed the hungry, ministered to physical, spiritual, emotional, and even the financial needs restoring dignity to those who thought it was lost. She's always eager to lend a helping hand instead of handing the situation to someone else or just simply looking the other way. She has sown into lives confidence instead of fear, love in the midst of hatred, forgiveness instead of unforgiveness, and possibility instead of impossibility. Linda's, lab Linda's labor has been without the desire for earthly reward, but embracing the truth that being the servant is greater than to be served. If she were to have a reality show, the theme song would be, if I can help somebody as I pass along, I won't sing it, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can help somebody from doing wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. So if you would stand and receive, as I present my friend, a woman of distinction, a woman extraordinaire, a woman of, woman of resilience, a woman of excellence, a woman of purpose, our Lee County Woman of the Year, Ms. Linda When Mr. Basinger called me one day, I was coming down 421 in my old trusted Ford truck. And he told me that um, the Lee County Community Foundation had selected me to be the 2019 Woman of the Year. Now, I almost went off the side of that roof. <laughs> But anyway, it was almost unbelievable. 
Because I thought, what have I done to be named the 2019 Woman of the Year? But anyway, thank you so very much, the County Community Foundation, for trying to be worthy to receive this honor this evening. I have some family members here this evening, and I'm going to move right on through this. Uh, I have some family members, some church members, some friends, and I would like to introduce them because some of them have traveled from a far distance to be here as part of this celebration. And one thing for sure, you may never see her again in live and live in color. But that's my sister over there, Hollis Glover. <laughs> my sister lives in the land store. And uh, thank you for coming. I also have with me tonight my uncle and aunt, Melvin and Sadie Parks. Thank you for coming. Now I have two inserts this evening to add to uh, this brief presentation. So this is insert number one. If I were to go to www.ancestry.com and put in the names of my children and grandchildren, The little green leaf would not fall, indicating a genealogical DNA family connection. However, if I were to type in www family connection underscore not blood dot com, I believe hundreds of green leaves would fall. To become a family, there is one thing I've found is true. A family is not always about blood. Sometimes it is people who accept you for who you are, and you accept them for who they are. The bond is called love. Tonight, I have with me my children. I have two beautiful daughters. One is somewhere on the highway waiting for a tow truck. But the other is seated to my left, Alessandra Bennett Lowry, and her husband, Lamont Lowry. Alessandra has a successful dental practice in Greenville, North Carolina, and Lamont is the HR director at East Carolina University in the School of Dentistry. Alessandra Lamont. I also have another daughter, and again, she's somewhere out on the highway. But she is a supervising officer with the North Carolina prison system in Troy, North Carolina. So, Give her a hand and I'll I have four beautiful grandsons Brenton, Gabriel, Julian, and Sebastian. I have my son here tonight from Ethiopia via Arlington, Texas, Emmanuel Tesfe, and my daughter-in-law, Miss Rapp Tesfe, please stand. And I also have Miss Rapp's sister, Asli Handessa, please stand. I have four Ethiopian children, uh, Daniel, Tiny, Frey, and Gurma. And I lost one son, 
Haile Selassie four years ago. But let me just say this. I remember the day in 1978. I was able to bring Emmanuel, Daniel, and Haile from the island of Malta to the United States. They graduated from Eastern Randolph High School, but they became my sons. They, I have a, their sister, Frey Hewitt, who is also a student at Randolph Community College. Another sister, Tiny, came to join them later. And then an older brother, Gurma, was already here in America. So thank you for being my family. Also here tonight to support me is my church family, to include my pastor, Reverend Thomas Smith, and members, and I'm not gonna try to call the names tonight, and friends who have traveled from other churches to be here this evening. So I'm not going to call your name, but thank you so very much for coming. There is a special friend in the audience this evening. She has been there for me through some turbulent times. And this lady has helped me stay glued when the pieces, and I mean when the pieces, were falling apart. And when I lost my only biological son in 2005, she was my anchor. She's been there for me. Mrs. Brenda Kelly. Another lady who mentored me, and you always need men mentors in your life. And she took a chance to extend my career in education by hiring me as her assistant principal with the Fort Bright School System. And had it not been for her, there would not have been a tenure for me with the Fort Bright Schools. And I'm happy to present to you Dr. Mary Brigham from Fayetteville, Minnesota. <laughs> there is a second insert that I want to take just a minute to give you. And it's going to be like an Insta Instagram snapshot of the lady whose bio is in the program. Believe it or not, that lady was once a little girl. So now I'm going to transition using first person singular. I was born in Roaring River, and you don't know where that is. But if you're on your way to Boone, North Carolina, you will pass by a road sign that says red, white, and blue to the right. So this is in Wilkes County. I lived there with my maternal grandparents who were considered tenant farmers. This farming relationship meant that crops had to be harvested and planted at the right time of the year. When school began each year, the harvesting had begun and when the farm chores were completed for the year, the cold chill of fall was in the air. This made it almost impossible to attend school on a regular basis because the distance from the farmhouse to the school bus stop was five miles, and the trip to the school on the school bus was another 12 miles. And unless one of my uncles, the ones, one of them seated here, was able to accompany me, it was difficult for me to get to, the, to, uh, to school and to the, went to the bus stop and to the school. My attendance was so poor I found myself not being promoted, and I stayed in the first grade for three and a half years. And you might say my introduction to formal education was not a positive experience. My grandmother was an excellent reader and decipher of numbers. God endowed her with the wisdom to do homeschooling long before it was popularized and became an acceptable means of educating children. She taught my uncles and me to read 
and to do mathematics by lamplight. Mathematics was taught by counting sugar daddy sticks and BB bat candy sticks. And the Bible became our core reader. Learning poetry, nursery rhymes, and memorizing words to hymns were also extended activities to promote learning. In what would have been the second semester of my fourth grade year, I moved from Wilkes County, from the Wilkes County farm, to Randolph County to live with my mother and stepfather. The first day of attendance at the school, I was in the first grade. I was nine years of age. I was about as big as I am now. <laughs> and bullying, if, if bullying were in place, I'm sure that's what they would have done. But on that first day of school, the teacher gave me a book to read. And I was able to read the book. I was able to do the math. And I could do it at fourth grade level. So I guess I'm the only person that went from first grade to fourth grade in one day. <laughs> but that's a little bit of the story of my life. So again, thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you again, the County Community Foundation, for extending to me this honor. And I must say that it has been nerve wracking just waiting, but it will always be a treasured memory for the rest of my life. I've been here 33 years, and I thank God for this night. Thank you. stuff that you just do that's coming out of just how you operate there's two emotions that's going to hit you wow you're going to be excited and thankful and look what i've done and then all of a sudden you say wait a minute all these people are going to look at me and look at all the other people out there and so these people have it meant it, it wrecks their emotions i promise you that they go through so many emotional things trying to receive this award that um and i've heard from every one of those people that i listed on here and these two are no different that um, they're glad to get it, and then they're so taken back by it. It's kind of hard to digest, and you know what? That's when we see the humility come across them. And look at those flowers. All right. <laughs> after being inducted to the Phi Beta Kappa and twice serving as a president of Chi Phi fraternity. He married his high school sweetheart, Kathy Ross, moved to Sanford, commuted to law school at UNC Chapel Hill, and began uh, practicing, practicing law in Sanford in 1975. His two children have produced four grandchildren, which are his number one source of amusement. <laughs> You church people can say amen to that. <laughs> All right. His practice areas are commercial and residential real estate, business organizations, wills, trusts, and estate administration. Robert has 
um, is a past president of the Jonesboro Rotary Club and Sanford Area Chamber of Commerce and former, formerly chaired uh, a local advisory council of the Salvation Army. He attends First Baptist Church, where he has twice chaired the Board of Deacons, uh, directs ushers each Sunday morning, and has taught Sunday school for over 33 decades. He performs in two bands, doing country vocals with Tuesday night music club, uh, plus solid gold band, RN5P. If you've never heard that, those are great bands. You need to hear that. That's pretty cool. And it's such, you wouldn't think it would come out of here, but that's, that's great. Out of Rome. As an AV rating, as an attorney through Martindale Hull since 1999, which is the highest possible peer review rating in legal ability and ethical standards. Here to present Jerry Pedley tonight and, and or host and roasting with his <laughs> Rock Gillen. Special evenings we honor uh, Jerry and Linda uh, as the Lee County Community Foundation's Man and Woman of the Year. Well, definitions first. Uh, what is Man of the Year? Um, more importantly, from Jerry Pedley's perspective, what does Man of the Year actually do for Jerry? <laughs> now, from the material I read, uh, some of the stuff indicates things you would expect. Uh, a great dinner. At the Carolina Trace Country Club, that's good. Uh, bad news, of course, for Jerry is he had to spring for 50 tickets for his family. <laughs> <laughs> you get your photo on the front page of the Sanford Herald of Linda Smith. Now, Linda's picture's above Jerry's. Uh, and I guess, uh, fact check, this is actually on A6 of the Sanford <laughs> instead of the front page. And uh, A5 was the Deep Rivers Valentine. <laughs> Other benefits that you may not have heard of, uh, while Jerry is man of the year, uh, instead of the five second rule for food items that fall on the floor, Jerry gets ten full seconds. <laughs> you know those trust falls where you cross your arms and then you fall back and people catch you? Well, Jerry gets to call trust fall wherever he is. I mean, it could be at work, <laughs> bars, the post office, wherever he is, and, um, and folks have to catch him. Um, probably best, he gets to demonstrate his fluent French. Anytime he wants to. Uh, for example, uh, Donna, uh, would you like me to take out the garbage? <laughs> Donna, did I ever tell you about the time when I started out in business as a single man in Chicago, and I had to sleep in a chase lounge. <laughs> That's French, you get it? <laughs> yeah, you told me that story 500 times, Jerry. <laughs> and when he and Dan Swanson wrap up choir practice on Thursday nights at local Joe's, <laughs> <laughs> he can call out to his buddies, au revoir, mes amis. <laughs> but man of the year? <laughs> Really? Look at the age of this crowd. <laughs> Who's going to remember? <laughs> Who won the Super Bowl in 2000? Man of the month. Man of the month. Probably a week at best. Uh, but enough of that, Jerry. Uh, I'm sure you've watched the Oscars recently and were impressed by the parade of glamorous actors and actresses who were nominees, attendees, and one of these, but also played the very important role of presenter. And you're naturally going to wonder, how do you get a gig like this at a prestigious event? So I've got some possible scenarios for your consideration. I went to the restroom about 20 minutes ago. I'm standing in one of the urinals engaged in a task, and beside me is the Community Foundation President, Michael Basinger. And he gives me the man nod, uh, and then he says, uh, How'd you like to introduce Jerry Pedley in about 20 minutes? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's silly. None, none of you would believe that no community foundation president would be that poor at planning. <laughs> All right, number two. Uh, 
uh, Bay's members at work recently watching attorney Michael Cohen testify before Congress uh, about what a low life one of his former clients was. And then he remembers, I haven't gotten anybody to introduce Jerry Pendley at the man. <laughs> so I need to reach out to his lawyer, Robert Gillen, see if he'll testify. <laughs> Of course, that's hardly believable either. Try this one. Uh, Basinger composes an email to me asking me to introduce Jerry, and then he proceeds to send the email to my son, Robbie Gillen, who has the same first and last name. <laughs> now, Robbie gets the email, doesn't know Jerry Penley, or doesn't want to introduce him anyway. So he sees this from Basinger, forwards me the email. Uh, meanwhile, Basinger calls my office, doesn't talk to me, leaves me a message and said, I sent you an email. Uh, so after a few days, I email Michael and say, I would consider doing this if you can give me one funny Jerry Penley story. Well, a week goes by. I hear nothing from Basinger. So I email him and I say, well, you know, if you can't come up with one funny Jerry Penley story in a week, how am I supposed to roast him and get laughs out of this article? I get a quick reply from Michael, working on it. Working on it. And then fortunately, good friend uh, Sherry Swanson comes to the rescue. That's a bad boy, dirt on Jerry. Uh, uh, as Michael mentioned, I've actually been a presenter before. Uh, the first time was David Spivey. And I, well, I was funnier then. I was younger then. I had more hair. The whole deal was funnier uh, back then. David Spivey was uh, the honoree. And he's a legend of hometown goodness. And he's married to Carolyn, so the material was no problem. <laughs> Then Dean Kessler in 2015, and Dean has delivered about 12,000 babies, which used to be the population of Sanford. <laughs> um, I think most of them were present at that evening, and so mostly it was them talking to one another about their experiences of being birthed by Dean. So that was easy. <laughs> but Jerry Kennedy, come on, he's not even from around here. <laughs> I mean, there were no Kennedys here before Jerry came. He claims to be from Iowa. I mean, Iowa who? <laughs> is Iowa. <laughs> well, in Sanford, when we need to do some fast and accurate research, how do we do it? Well, of course, we go to the post office, we wait in the parking lot for people to walk out with their mail, and just like the Sanford's Heralds, what do you think? You ask folks, where do you think Iowa is? Well, some of the answers we got uh, of course, Iowa who, not, you know, not helpful and not funny after the first time. Uh, <laughs> South American country near Bolivia. <laughs> but my favorite, one of the Hawaiian Islands. <laughs> anyway, that's silly too. Uh, that's not how you conduct research. I mean, I work in a law office. We research stuff all the time. And I have lots of research tools at my disposal. So I research it the way smart lawyers do. I Google it. <laughs> I quickly found out the location of Iowa, uh, found out it's actually a state in the United States, so that's good to know. The objective, of course, was not to give you information about Iowa, but to introduce Jerry Pedley. Uh, so I googled Jerry Pedley in Iowa, and I got nothing. Zip <laughs> So Jerry, Sherry, again, helped me with some other things. I googled high school track star, Iowa. Nothing. <laughs> I tried high school football star. I nothing. <laughs> Most likely to succeed in Iowa high school class of 32 in Pedro. Nothing. <laughs> I kept Googling him. Nothing. Uh, it's, it's crazy. There's something out there for everybody. Uh, so I got some more info from Sherry, and then I Googled again. I squealed on little brothers for smoking behind the barn. <laughs> got a hit. <laughs> Iowa, yellow Dodge Colt station wagon painted pea soup green with added, with added vertical tractor exhaust with flapper for use in snowy conditions. Got another hit. <laughs> Carolina Hurricanes fan, who along with Dan Swanson regularly drove to Kane's games during Stanley Cup championship year, an old caddy formerly used by a funeral home with minted replica Stanley Cup latch on the trunk and hurricane flags flying from the fence. Got another hit. <laughs> All right, I'm on a roll now. So, robotics nerd, Sanford, got another hit. 
Sanford, North Carolina, fell through roof and survived. <laughs> Mary Jerry. <laughs> Anyway, Jerry left Chicago, Jane became a Pedley of North Carolina, and now this is, this is true stuff. Jerry's married to Donna, and she is a great lady who's totally responsible for every good thing about Jerry. Everything he's done, everything he's invented, Donna's idea. <laughs> seven grandchildren and three even greater great-grandchildren. Uh, I've been fortunate to be Jerry's lawyer for many years, but all that stuff's confidential. So that's <laughs> what I can tell you. The years of being Jerry's lawyer is he likes to do stuff and not tell Donna about it. <laughs> okay, I joked about Googling Jerry Penley and getting nothing, and that is a joke. Uh, just try Googling him. Um, magazine covers. Uh, number one, Trump, of course. Number two, Trump, of course. Number three, Jerry Penley. I mean, honestly, if you Google, if they just, they're, they're flying off the printer. Magazine covers of Jerry. Um, North Carolina Business Magazine. Statewide honor goes to Murtech Solutions in 2017 as business, small business of the state. National NAF Advisory Board Champion Award presented to Jerry in Dallas, Texas in 2017. And NAF, I was talking with Andrew uh, Keller, NAF's a nonprofit which recognized Jerry and two other U.S. business leaders at that time who provided extraordinary leadership, allowing students to participate in work-based activities that prepare them for success in college and careers. Uh, NAF academies are four-year programs in high schools, uh, Lee County has one, uh, Southern Lee has one, there's six in Lee County I read. Uh, Jerry and Murtech Solutions offers those high school students opportunities to be interns, provides some internships while they're high school students, introduce them to manufacturing. Um, they get to see up close what engineers do at one of the region's most successful robotics company, which is Murtech Solutions. Jerry helps with high school robotics teams. He offers the Murtech facilities and materials for their use. He also helps area schools make connections with four-year colleges and businesses. He champions internships, which permits those local students to do part-time work at Murtech Solutions while attending school. If you didn't know, Jerry started his own automation company in 1990, Electromechanical Specialties. Now, Murtech Solutions builds custom assembly and test equipment right here in Sanford under Jerry's watchful eyes. He is a wizard in his industry and an innovator. So he's doing something that he loves to do and he's extremely good at it, but he doesn't stop at doing what benefits him and his family. He is sincerely motivated to create more innovative work-based learning experiences as well as more internship and community service opportunities for young people in this area. He also uses his skills and love for flying to introduce young people to the thrill of flying as a volunteer flight leader through the Young Eagles program, which provides introductory plane rides to kids from 7 to 17. He also participates in Air Lifeline and flies patients with special health needs to area hospitals, including children's, the Shriners Hospitals for Care. Jerry serves or has served on more advisory boards in Lee County and the nearby area. Sanford Area Growth Alliance, CCCC, CCH, Lee County Schools, NC State, Campbell University, and on it goes that you even knew existed. Uh, Jerry has killed it as a business person. But after all these years in the business, he can't wait to tackle the next problem or his next customer's workplace need. Plus, he wants to share that excitement and that spirit of creativity with the next generation of young innovators robotics nerds, and engineers. That's what makes Jerry special. And did I tell you Jerry's humble about all this stuff? No big deal to Jerry. It's what you should do. Be a good husband, dad and granddad, a good boss to your employees, a helper to others in your community, a teacher, an encourager to young students, and a friend to many. Plus start a tradition of Halloween parties uh, that cannot be accurately described. <laughs> I recently learned that the English language doesn't have a male synonym for terms like prima donna or diva. That's ladies only. 
But that's okay. Those words don't apply to Jerry Pedley anyway. He's humble about everything I've described, and I'm sure that he'll stay that way. In fact, I'd like to propose a new word from the dictionary. I'd like to nominate it from the noun, verb, and adjective categories. The following. Pet, a noun, a humble person. Example, I have never heard Jerry brag about his accomplishments. He's a real pet. <laughs> Pedley, verb, too humble. Example, I was going to brag about that new account that Jerry Pedley me before I could get started. <laughs> also, verb for use at home with one spouse. Definition, to try to avoid household tasks by playing all home. Example, Donna said, don't you dare try to pet me, Jerry. <laughs> get those dishes washed. <laughs> and finally, Pedley the adjective, overly humble. Example, I tried to get Jerry to take credit for his many accomplishments and fine qualities of character, service, generosity, and kindness to others, wit, and genuinely good nature, but he wouldn't. Jerry is so darn petty. <laughs> Jerry, would you come up here now and accept your award and try not to be petty? <laughs> came to Sanford way back in 1990, and Donna follows me out here, 1989 I guess, and uh, we were going to stay here five years and leave, she never complained, I moved here for a job, after five years we had formed a business, so I couldn't leave, and we, were, we always wanted to go back, but, but she's been along with me all these years, and, and I certainly appreciate that, appreciate that, so came to Sanford, and after six months, I successfully put a company out of business that, I, that helped move me here. So I accomplished something, another peddly thing there. And then we started a company in 1990. It's evolved and we saw a lot of good things, a lot of great days, and we saw the bad days too. And hopefully we've learned from the bad days as they come again, and they will. We'll, uh, we'll make sure that we get through those and do better than ever. So certainly, again, appreciate all you Murtech people. If I can point you all out one at a time, and I could go on for 10 minutes about how each of you, but I won't do that. So, gosh, you, uh, you uh, Lee County uh, Foundation folks, we appreciate you nine people. I don't know how y'all do it. Um, and Bay Singer, he, he did the same thing to me. I was driving home from Lorenberg one day, and he says, we selected you for this award. And, uh, and, and I was in a state of shock, and I probably went to the ditch. I think I pulled over <laughs> and uh, talked to him for a while. So. It's a, it's a great award, and we appreciate uh, all that this foundation does here in Lee County, and all the scholarships and all the things they do for education. And I will not sit down without talking about education. Linda was involved in education, and that's how we met years ago. But this Lee, these Lee County schools and the education systems that we have here are just fantastic. 
and, I, and I'll start just by bragging. So Lee County Schools, we have academies of engineering, academies of finance, academies of hospitality in both of our schools, and we have all these youth in them, and they're awesome. And then we have Skills USA as a nationwide group of kids. And the president of Skills USA, he goes to Lee County Schools. And guess what? He works at Martech. <laughs> then we have a president for Skills USA for the state of North Carolina. And guess what? She goes to Lee County Schools and she works at Martech. So we have all these youth and things going on in our schools. Um, I believe we have 50 career technical education teachers right here in our schools and they're training people to, to take over Murtech and to do these great things. So very much appreciated. Then our community college in 1990 when we started, I called over there and I said I need some tool and die guys to do some work. And I think within a day we had three guys out there to apply for those jobs. And I think two of them are still there. So the community college has been very, very good to me and we appreciate all that they do. I get to sit on boards at Campbell University and, and NC State, so there's just a lot of good things that are happening and we appreciate it. Again, I, I especially thank this community uh, for all you've done for me. Um, I get way, way, way more in return than I ever could give and I, and I thank you very much for being here today. Appreciate it. Thank you tonight for um, for attending and for recognizing our man and woman of the year. It's been a, it's just it's uplifting to see this, and, and I'm sure it's uplifting to you to hear it. But um, these are two great people, and um, they're not through. We didn't have a funeral tonight. We had a celebration. So uh, we thank you. We thank you for your support. And um, look, we're gonna have this again next year. We hadn't picked it yet, but there's plenty of people to pick from. And um, you know, you could be next. <laughs> so without any further ado, thank you for coming and have a great evening. Good night.